Good morning on this Saturday. Uh, we are going to look at Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> In chapter 12, um, Paul begins with the word kind of therefore. He's in the middle of that very first sentence. I appeal to you therefore. And he's this therefore refers all the way back to, you know, for many chapters of what Paul has been talking about, about our Christian duties, about life in God, about how God is the one who is gracious and forgiving, and how God is the one who has made himself available, not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles, to all people. And it is because of all of that that's come before that Paul says, I appeal to you now to present you know, my version says, your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. I mean, it, you know, it isn't your body, your physical body. It's present yourself to God. Present who you are to God as, as, a, as a living sacrifice, as holy and acceptable to God. And um, I, I don't think of myself as holy. I, I just don't. But, but I am righteous because of God. I am forgiven because of God. I am acceptable to God because of God. And, and he says, you'll present yourself this way because this is your spiritual worship. This is the way we come to God. And uh, verse two is such an important one. Do not be conformed to the world. Do not take on all of the worldly ways. And uh, I'm reminded by that that I don't know if it was Luther or something, probably somebody way before Luther said that, you know, as a, as a child of God, we live with one foot in the world and one foot in heaven. You know, we're, you know, so not to be, we are in the world, but not to be of the world. So don't conform to all the things of the world. Don't, don't just say, yeah, everything is okay. I mean, this is what the world would have us do, you know, to say that, Everything is okay. All, all ways of living. All th things are, you know, and everybody will be saved. You know, and you know, but Paul, don't be conformed to the ways of the world because not everybody will be saved. I mean, not everybody believes and accepts in God. You know, and people will turn their backs on God. But, but, but the reminder: do not be conformed by the world. And I. No, I've shared this before, but I had a person one time say to me that it's about time the church started conforming to the world, to the ways of the world. And I, you know, I said, no, no, it isn't the church's position to conform to the world. It's the church's position. It's the church's duty to call the world to conform to God's word, to say that this is what God says. This is how we should live. This is who we should be. Not that we, the church, and everybody else conforms to all of the whims and the wills of the world. And that's a scary proposition to just conform to the world and accept all of the worldly things. He says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. I mean, the will of God is good things for us. The will of God is for us to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You know, we can't, I mean, when we're trying to determine the will of God, I mean, we, we can't know the mind of God uh, other than what we, we see and we read in the Bible. And this is the word of God for us. And it is then to, as we know that word of God and as we study the word of God, and use the word of God to interpret the word of God, um, then we can, you know, begin to know the will of God. I just was looking at, I saw a deal the other day that, you know, so many things that the Bible says that, that we do, you know, that we shouldn't do that we do. And one of them was, you know, to cut your hair and to trim your beard. Well, I mean, if you go way back and you look at that, that was meant for the Levites. That was meant for a certain group, not for everybody, you know, and, and other things that, you know, that, um, you know, you, you can't just open a Bible and point to something and say, this is what I'm going to do because, 
you know, when you're reading about, you know, after the betrayal, you know, what happens, you know, you put your finger where Judas went out and hung himself. Well, I mean, you don't do that. And, and we realize why he did it. But so it, it's to be careful in how we interpret the Bible and to be careful that we don't try to read into things. It's, you know, it's like, you know, we can read it says the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah were that they did not take care of the widow and the orphan. Well, there were a whole lot more sins of Sodom and Gomorrah than just that. We know that. But, but it's to not just take one little snippet, but we need to know the word of God so that we can understand the will of God. Verse 3 says, For by grace given to me, I say that every one of you may, should not think more highly of yourself. You know, you know and, and this is something that happens. I mean, people put on airs. People think, I'm better, I'm a goody, you know, and, and we call some of those people goody-goody two-shoes. But, you know, be careful as to what you think of yourself and how you compare yourself to others. And in verse 5, We who are many are one body in Christ, Individually, we are members of one another. You know, it's, we work together for the good of all. And, you know, when he goes on, he says, says, we have gifts that differ from each other. And this is a good thing. You know, it's, it's a good thing we don't all have identical minds or what, you know, we wouldn't be able to balance each other out and help each other. Whereas we've got, you know, farmers and teachers and doctors and pharmacists. And, I mean, you know, we have many different professions and we have many different skills verses 9 through oh i don't know just about the end of the chapter anyway let love be genuine hate what is evil hold fast to what is good love one another with mutual affection outdo one another in showing honor do not lag in zeal but be enthusiastic for for the the work of the lord be ardent in spirit serve the lord rejoice in hope you know, persevere in prayer, you know, to know and to have a proper focus in life, you know, to, to, to see what is needed and to act upon that need and to work together for that need. You know, it says, contribute to the needs of the saints, saints extend hospitality to strangers. We are to, to love and to rejoice and to work together. Um, verse 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with one another, with all. You know, I mean, as far as it be possible with you. you know, and it doesn't mean that everybody else is going to get along with you. Everybody else is going to agree. But as far as it be possible with you, be a, a peacemaker, be a peacekeeper, be one who's willing to help out and to, to go the extra mile, be the one that's willing to have a, a, a listening ear, you know, live peaceably with all. Don't, don't start provoking fights and arguments and, you know, rather than highlight differences, you know, look for similarities and look for ways that we work together for the good of all in that way. Um, and then a reminder, Paul writes in verse 19 for, you know, leave room for the wrath of God for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Um, and it, it's a hard thing not to want to have vengeance, not to want to have karma, you know, come back and get that person, you know, it's just, you know, we, we like to see that result, but it's, you know, it's not up to us to make sure it happens. It's not up to us to, to, to do that, you know, to just to you know, let it go. In verse 21, the way we, where we end today, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Don't let yourself, your life, your heart, your mind, your being <clears throat> be shaped by the evils and overpowered by the evils of the world so that you, you lose hope, you have, you lost focus, you're, you know, don't become depressed and, and down, but, but rather when, when we look at the, the evils of the world, and I'm talking about all of the sins and everything that's going on in the world that is opposite of what God would have, but do your best to do good. Do your best to be the best you can be, 
to be loving, to be forgiving, to be encouraging, to, to be a part of the body of Christ. Some days it's easy. Other days, not so much. But it's a reminder to us that that God is there giving us strength, leading us and guiding us, and that be, you know, persevere in prayer is a, is a powerful thing. We sometimes people you know discount prayer, and but to take time to spend with God it helps our minds clear, gives us strength, and and many times will give us direction and peace of heart and mind.